This one pains me. This one pains me. I want a few people that thinks the world of Isaiah Thomas, the basketball player. Zeke was one of my favorite players growing up. But oh, Zeke. Oh, Zeke, Zeke, Zeke. I'm going to do a two part. This first one, I'm going to go in from a different perspective. So the other one's coming up about the, what he said. But this one here, I'm going to go in first. Old Isaiah Thomas. You're one of my favorite players ever. You are one of the greatest players ever. I will debate Isaiah Thomas against Kevin Durant. I will debate Isaiah Thomas somewhere in the 15 to 23, 24 slot all time. I will debate that. But let me get a couple of things off my chest. He is very tummy ache hurt because A, in his own home city of Chicago, Michael Jordan surpassed him. And then Dwayne Wade surpassed him. Check, check, check. So he has taken it to, you know, been pro LeBron. I don't necessarily have a problem if someone honestly feels that way, but I don't think that was the intention. Let me tell you why I think Isaiah Thomas went on LeBron, the La Media tip before it was fashionable. Because actually he did push that. So did Bill Lambeer and he got a job in the WNBA. Um, but Rodman doesn't do that. Ain't that funny how Rodman was the wild card kind of do as he does? And Rodman is more Jordan than he is LeBron. But then again, Rodman said that crazy remark about Larry Bird being overseas. So I, you know. But this is the thing. Isaiah Thomas was too ghetto for the NBA and TV. I told you when he won that chip and he was up there singing, Heaven must be like this. And I remember when he was on NBC, remember? He had the studio. He was in there with Peter Vesey. We used to call him Peter Versace and Bob Wack Costas. He was in there with old man Costas and Peter Versace, all arrogant. And, and they asked Isaiah a question. He said, you don't want to get gangster. Me and my homeboy were cracking up. Because you know, the white boys look at him like, what did this cat say? He said, don't get gangster. The next week, I kid you not, he had a microphone, a blazer on, and he was in the stands next to Ahmad. That's why Ahmad got back in. He's scared him, folks. And he always had those clean, white, pearly teeth. But he was a hood cat. And he scared him. So in order to get into the NBA studios and get... See, this is where winning is overrated. He's a great example. He went to three straight finals. Should have been a three-peat. That play in L.A. was suspect. On one leg, I always remember 88. And I will boast and brag about him. Four straight Eastern Conference Finals. I will boast and brag about Isaiah Thomas. But let me get to this point. He had to jump on a legenda to be a Hall of Famer, a multi-time winner, a Finals MVP, All-Star Star MVP, etc., etc. And to me, the baddest player, 6'1 and under. And I will debate anybody on that. I will take him over Allen Iverson today and twice next Sunday. I'll take him over Steve Nash at his best. I'm going to take him over John Stockton. I will debate him on the court. I will take him over Tiny Archer, but I got much respect for Tiny. I will take him there. But this ain't about that. This about him having to go along, get along, gang, because they didn't really want him. So he had to say something. And his disdain for Jordan is mutual, and I'll always understand it. I always will get it because he should have been on the dream team. Ain't no way in the world John Stockton should have been on there. They should have had a spot, just like Jalen Brown should have been on this thing. He has many rings as Jordan. He had more rings than Stockton and Carl Malone and Dave Robinson put together. Okay? And I'm trying to think of who else I want to pick on that was on that dream team that more than Patrick Ewing. You're not going to tell me a made man who had already established himself and small in size than them cats and you couldn't get on there. But he had to do what he had to do. He had to do the legenda because they weren't ever going to give him no love. He's too black. He's too scary. And I'm not talking about like he was King Kong or, you know, he was like like Ben Wallace was when he's like, can you dig it with the fro scaring? You know, I'm talking about his vibe. He wasn't crossover. People don't always understand that. So he had to do that shuffle. The downside is the lies of keep saying this stuff just to get on. That's what ended up happening. 
So I'm just taking time to acknowledge that in this video. The next one I'm going to, you know, but it pains me because as a player, I do understand his gripes. He beat Jordan. He beat Magic. He beat Bird and he beat Barkley. He beat Mo He did. And he never got his due. The smallest one of them all did never get his due. And I don't hear enough people give him his due. Because that's how the NBA got a lot of actors. Isaiah was bad. People get excited about Kyrie. <sighs> Isaiah would have figured out Boston. He did. Against better Celtics. You ain't going to sit here and tell me that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown is seeing Bird, Parrish, and McHale. You ain't going to tell me or Dennis Johnson with a straight face. You ain't. But the things he has to say to be part of the little media and the go-along, get-along game is a sorry state of affairs. And sometimes it's hard. I have to separate the two as I do. I have to acknowledge him as one of the greatest players ever, but also the shuffleboarder. Please like, subscribe, welcome thoughts, comments, and I do respond. Thank you. Watch your hands. Keep your mind clear. Watch out for another shit if you like. And please hit that membership because the video is your request. I'll get them back to you. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay true. Stay honest. Stay focused. Stay right. Stay clear. Stay clear. I'm out one time. Peace.